Today, we're flying the oldest Boeing 777 still flying. This aircraft rolled off the production line as the second 777 ever built in 1994 and was delivered to United in March of 1996. Join us as we fly her from Chicago to Orlando. Good morning from O'Hare International Airport. Currently, we are in the Tunnel of Lights, transiting between Terminal 1's B and C gates, and join us as we fly from C-10, the oldest 777 still flying. Having traveled two days after Christmas, O'Hare International Airport was decked out with holiday decorations celebrating the Christmas season. Being blocked by two jet bridges and the United Club, this was the only view available of our aircraft, November 774 Uniform Alpha, originally delivered to United in March of 1996. Due to long security lines, it was no time at all before we boarded United Airlines Flight 2340 with service to Orlando. Next, after asking the flight attendant, we were given access to the flight deck. Captain Ken and Captain Gary, Captain Ben, we've got some more captains Good morning. Good morning. Hey, how are you Good morning. I'm a, I'm a student pilot, so ah, I, awesome. my, my instructor, he, he flew with United for 40 years, so he's just, he, well, he's inspired me. I'll get a video of you. Oh, geez, thank you. After learning that all three of the pilots either knew of or flew with my flight instructor, one of the pilots took my phone to take videos and photos of me in the first officer's seat. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. Oh, yeah. Unsad. <laughs> hey, it's a Google phone. With my Apple, I just say film. <laughs> anyway. This was definitely one of the greatest cockpit experiences I've ever had, sharing lots of laughs and conversations with the captain, first officer, and deadhead. Thank you guys. All right. All right. Good place. Next, I made my way through the 242 configured first class cabin to the 343 configured economy cabin. Seat 17 Alpha on 777-200s arguably has the best view of the two Pratt & Whitney PW4070 engines, each rated to up to 94,000 pounds of thrust. As briefly mentioned earlier, United's high-density 777-200s are in a two-class configuration, with first class being a 242 configuration and economy being 343, narrowing to 242 near the back. We're ready to go, and uh, should be off the gate on time. Air traffic control has told us uh, we might need to hang out here in Chicago for uh, up to 55 minutes uh, waiting on uh, an air traffic control spot down in Orlando. And in the meantime, uh, we'll keep you also in the loop on your air traffic control speakers. Welcome. Following this announcement, we push back as normal and witnessed one of the smokiest engine starts I've ever seen.
the fire for that design to your cover of construction. We'll be taking off those buttons to bring our two bags up, close your tape cables, put your apartment to remove the device, hold your staff to empty both, and return the headrest up over it, back to the original position. Put a beverage in plus to collect it, put away from the departure. We'll be coming back to collect it in your main server bed, slide it in, and you can see my mistake to check if you see this. Yep, that was definitely the smokiest engine start I've ever seen. After that, we taxied out to our holding spot. Which was just next to runway 10 left. Following that announcement, we watched an Air ACT Cargo 747-400 arrive from Liège, Belgium, and then we taxied out for our departure on runway 10 left. That was a good takeoff roll. The spool up of the Pratt and Whitney engines aboard the 777-200 remind me of the XWB engines aboard the Airbus A350s. The first half of the flight mostly consisted of me watching out the window as we passed various aircraft, including this Mayersk Air Cargo 767 on its way to Charlotte. After reaching our cruising altitude at flight level 390, 
the drink surface began, and I went with the predictable ginger ale. Some interesting features about this seat include the fact that the light and flight attendant call button are within the armrest, as well as the tray table. In addition, power outlets can be found in between each seat. That being said, this aircraft definitely shows its age in the lavatory. Grime, stains, and scratches can be found on almost all corners of the restroom. As we crossed past the southern tip of Kentucky, we caught some great views of this river bend and rock formations around it. On approach to Orlando, we caught view of Orlando Stanford Airport, a departure from Orlando Executive, as well as a view of Orlando's Executive Airfield, and then finally, a view of Orlando International Airport on our downwind leg. Then, after a flight time of 2 hours and 3 minutes, we turned base and final to land on runway 36 left. After that great smooth touchdown, we taxied and docked at gate 47, ending this 777-200 journey. That's all for today, folks, and I'll see you in the skies next time.